Hi guys, this is Sadek from Rotten.com. In this video, we'll show you how to root any Motorola phone via Magisk. So please take a backup of all data on your phone and let's get started. I'll show you how to get the job done without using a custom recovery because not every phone has a custom recovery. So I'll not be using any recovery. We'll simply use the Magisk file and the boot or the init boot file to get this job done. So with that in mind, let's get started. First and foremost, please get the latest Android SDK from my article and extract them onto your PC. You will get the following files. Let me show you of platform tools you could see over here. One that is done, you will not have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. The debugging will come in handy for ADB commands and OEM unlocking is required to unlock the phone. So let's enable both the toggles. For that, go to settings, then about phone, device identifiers, tap on build number seven times, then go back, again go back, go to system, dev options and enable OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging from here. You'll get a prompt, tap on OK. You might get one more prompt, tap on Allow. And with this, the debugging is now enabled. Let me first do a verification. For verifying it, type in ADB in the Platform Tools folder address bar, hit the Enter key. OK, type in CMD, sorry, hit Enter. Now type in the command of ADB devices and verify that you are having an ID. If you're not having this ID, then unplug and replug the phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on USB, revoke USB debugging. Use any other cable and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So try this USB fixes and verify that you are having an ID. Once you are having this ID, your next action is to unlock the phone. For that, first of all, boot the phone to fast boot mode. And okay, let me show you once again the exact steps that will come in handy. I have an article and a video on that. So for Motorola phone, this is over here. Let's see it. So first off, boot the phone to fast boot mode. Once that is complete, type in this command fast boot OEM get unlocked data. You get this data, send this data to Motorola. They will then email you a code. Simply then use that code with the following command fast boot OEM unlock and type in this code over there, which the code which you have got from the email. After that, you will get the prompt that it's now unlocked. So once that is done, please re enable USB debugging once again. Anyways, moving on. Now comes the most important part. Generally, if your phone came with Android 12 or higher version, you have to use the file of init boot. But if your phone came with Android 12 or older version, then use the boot file. But there are a few exceptions. For example, the Moto G54, a phone which came with Android 13, but they still use the boot file and not the init boot file. So how to verify that? Well, the firmware of the Moto G54 only has a boot file. It does not have any init boot file. So that will come in handy, but still, the generic rule is that if your phone came in Android 12 or older version, use the file of init boot or else use the boot file. So with that in mind, let's move on with the next step. So now you have to first verify the phone's build number. So go there, go back, system, dev options. Okay, not once again, go back, go to about phone, device identifiers, and from here, have a look at the build number and then get the same formula for your phone. You could get the firmware from my article. I have given the link as well. So the link should be in this article only. For the Motorola phone, this is the link. So open this article in a new tab. And from here, get the firmware from this link. Please verify the your region as well. In my case, it's the India. It's the written R-E-D-I-N for the Asia Pacific. It's, it's over here. Verify the region code from this section and then get the firmware for your phone. In my case, it's the phone known as Cancuff F. Cancuff which is the Moto G54 red in build. The one is over here, you could see the V1TD535H, you could see it's the same one there onto my phone. So please verify it from the build number. Once you've got the firmware, it will be in a zip format. Extracted, you will get the following files. Now, copy the file of boot or the init boot accordingly. In my case, it's the boot file. Copy it and transfer the file onto your phone. So if your phone is not shown here, simply enable the file transfer from the section. Charging complete. Okay, not from here. Let me glow. See if it's shown here or not. Let me unplug. Okay, it's over here. Choose file transfer from the section. Your phone should not should not be shown here, and you could see it's shown. So paste the file of stock boot IMD file over here. Once that is done, let's move ahead with the next step. So our next action is to patch this file by Magisk. For that, go to my article and get the official Magisk APK file from here. Anyone will do. So for now, the latest build is the Stable S29 and the Canary is version 30.3 as well. You will use any one of these. 
let's use the simple one only for now. Official link. Then only get the magic APK from the official link only, not from any other site, any other source. Only the official will work. Once you've got the APK file, also transfer the file onto your phone. Just give me a second. Downloads. This is the magic APK file. Paste the file onto your phone. So as of now, the stock boot or the init boot file and the magic APK file should both be there onto your phone, as you could see. So now let's open the file manager app, the files app, anyone will do. And first of all, install the magic file over here. Settings allow from this source. Install. This will take just a few seconds to install. Then tap on open. Let me launch it from here. Allow. First off, tap on install. Select and patch a file. Choose the stock boot or the init boot file. In my case, it's the boot file. Choose from here. Tap on let's go. Magic will now patch the file. This will take only a few seconds. The patch file will be placed in the download folder of your phone. I'll show you that as well. You could see place in the download folder. So go to the folder of downloads on your phone. You will get the magic patch file. Copy the file from here. Paste the file inside platform tools, which is over here. And now do a renaming. Let's rename it to something shorter. Let's say patch. That is sufficient. IMG. File name could be anything of your choice. That's not a call of concern. Next up, boot the phone to fast boot mode. So type in the command of ADB, reboot, boot loader, and hit the enter key. Your phone should now be in the fast boot mode in a few seconds. All the steps are given in my article as well. You may have a look from my article and get the job done. So once you install, once you are inside the fast boot mode, Open CMD window once again, type in the command of fastboot devices and verify that you are having an ID. Let me see. If you are not having this ID, then please install the fastboot drivers onto your PC. The link should be given here only. So install from this article and once that is done, do a right click on the windows icon, choose device manager, expand the Android phone section and verify your phone is shown here or not. In our case, the phone is shown here. If that is not the case with you, then please install the fastboot drivers. Once that is done, let's now flash the file. So guys, now comes the most modern part. If you're using the boot file, the command is something different. For the file of init boot, the command is different. Let me show you both the commands. It's given in my article as well. The command for the init boot is this one. The file name is patch.img. Fastboot flash init boot patch.img. In our case, for the boot file, it's the fastboot flash boot patch.img. This is the file name. So please use the command accordingly. I'm using the patch the boot file only so this is the command in my case so let's open the cmd window inside platform tools once again paste in this command hit the enter key flashing will now start take only a few seconds if you're having this issue this issue only happened with a few motor phones in that case you'll have to boot the phone to the fast boot d mode then flash from there so please keep this point in mind a few motorola phones such as my moto g54 and I suppose also the Moto G64, these phone does not support flashing of boot file in the fastboot mode. So you'll have to boot up on the fastboot D mode and then get the job done. This is only with a few phones, but for most of the phones, they support the flash command. And after that, you can type in the command of fastboot reboot, hit the enter key. But if you're having this issue, then type in the command of fastboot reboot fastboot. This will boot up on the fastboot D mode. Only use this command if you're having this issue of this issue. Otherwise, this should work well and good. But if you're having this issue, in that case, flash the file in the fastboot D mode and not the fastboot mode. So I'll show you that as well. This will take a few seconds. So let's wait for that to complete. And once you're in the fastboot D mode, you could then flash the file with ease. So now once again, type in the same command. As you could see, for, so if you are on boot file, use the boot slot. If you are using the init boot, use the command of init boot. But both the commands should be now flash in the fastboot D mode and not the fastboot mode if you are having this issue in that case only. So with that said, mine is a boot partition. Using this command, hit the enter key. And now let's see what happens. You could see flashing went fine without an issue whatsoever. So please use the fastboot D mode if you're having this issue. And after that, type in the command of fastboot, reboot, hit enter. The phone should now boot to the OS. But the first booting up will take up some time. I guess 20, 30 seconds. That's all normal because we have just flashed the a patch boot file, not the stock one. It's a patch one. So the booting up might take up a little bit longer, which is nothing to worry about. Just keep in mind that if you're having this issue, then use the fastboot D mode for both the boot file and the 
Netwood file in both the cases, both the commands should be used in the fast boot demo only if in case of this issue. So please keep this point in mind. And with that said, the phone should now go to the OS in a few more seconds. And after that, we will install the Magis app in the front end as well. Okay, we already have the Magis app, that's not required. So we will simply launch the app and then see what else is required. So unlock the phone and you might get one more prompt from Magisk, that's not an issue. Over here, let's see what it's saying now. The Magisk app might say to do a direct install. Okay, nothing is required, that's weird to see. So we have got the Magisk. Let's now verify the root as well. For that, I'll use two apps. First is the basic root checker app. And then let's use the Termux app as well. Termux app, I'll use a command in the Termux app. Well, that is interesting. Where is the Termux app? I cannot find it over here. So any other routing app, just give me a second. The Termux app, I should be having it, but since it's not there. Okay, this is the app. Great. Termux app is there as well. Let's first enable file transfer. And we will use a couple of apps to verify the route. Let's also use the file. LS. Okay, Termux app is here. Paste it here. Likewise, let me also use one more app, the basic app, let's say root checker app, which is over here. Root checker. Let me show you one more app, let's say Shizuku app as well. We will use a couple of apps to verify root now. Let's start with the basic one, which is the root checker app. So launch the files app. Allow internal storage, which is over here. Root checker. Install. Open. Allow, agree, get started. Tap on verify root, you will get a magic request. Tap on grant and you could see you have obtained root on a Motorola phone. It's running Android 15. So next up, let's use a uh, app, Shizuku. Let's see how it works now. Open. Just tap on start for rooted phones. Start. You'll get a magic prompt. Tap on grant and you could see it's now up and running in the rooting environment. There's no need to enable wireless debugging. It's now running in root as you could see over here. So guys, that's all from this video. Just to recall in short what all we have did. So first of the few steps are same for all the phones. So which is over here. Get the Android SDK platform tools from my article. Enable OEM unlocking, USB debugging and unlock the phone. After that, get the SOC firmware which is should be the same as the one which is there onto your phone. You may verify it from the build number of your phone. So please get the exact same firmware. Once you have got the firmware, accept it. And then if your phone came with the Android 12 older version and use the boot file, if it came with Android 13 or higher version, use the file of init boot, then patch the file by Magisk, and then place the file inside platform tools, which is over here. Then flash the file as well. For flashing, first off, use the fast boot mode. But if you're having this issue, then use the fast boot D mode. The command is quite simple. Fast boot flash boot, then the patch file name, and fast boot flash boot, flash init boot for the init boot file. This is the two commands, that, that is just it. Once you use the command, type in fastboot reboot to move to the OS, then launch the magic app and you will have obtained root. So guys, that's all from this video. If you have any query, let me know in the comment section. And thanks a lot for watching.